you might wonder how foresters value standing timber, especially timber buyers and harvesting managers who are regularly buying timber like the block that I'm stood in today <clears throat> and harvesting them and putting them into much needed homegrown timber. So I'll carry out an initial assessment by walking the site using the details provided by the landowner or their forest manager and I'll be matching what I see on the ground compared to what they have provided in the details. So once I've carried out my initial assessment, what I'm really trying to ascertain is do the diameters, do the top heights, does the total volume match on the ground what is actually in the sales particulars and is there enough information there for me to carry out a valuation? And if there isn't, I might decide that I want to come back and I want to carry out my own measure on this and uh, that's usually quite a lot more time consuming. Uh, however, sometimes it's absolutely necessary to, to get the right volume. I'll also be looking out for things like hazards and constraints associated with the potential harvesting operations if we were successful on the, on the sale. So things like the mountain bike route that you can see behind me, uh, public rights of way, uh, but also things like ecological uh, and wildlife constraints. Uh, so things like uh, nesting birds, I'll be looking for nests, uh, squirrel drays, badger sets, uh, and these are all things that could potentially impact the timing of our harvesting operations and also things that we have to take into consideration, uh, sensitivities that uh, we need to be aware of that when we're on site with the machines that uh, we can potentially highlight areas where um, machines can't go. Uh, so I'd also be looking at things like infrastructure and stacking space. I'd be looking at the road surface, the quality of the road, does the road need any work doing to it? Is there any access issues potentially during the winter months? Stacking space, I'd be looking at what sort of road frontage it has. How much uh, access do we have for stacking from within the woods so we don't have to bring the machines onto the road? Uh, and I'd also be looking at things like ground conditions within the wood. I can then start taking into consideration the associated costs that we might have to consider with regards to the valuation for the timber harvesting operations. And I might decide that I want to revisit the site with a harvesting contractor and get his first hand thoughts on the complexities of the site and what his thoughts are on the on the cost. And I can also start thinking about end markets and the haulage costs that might be associated with those end markets as well. And I have a good idea at that point of what it's going to cost and uh, what sort of return that the landowner might expect to get at the end of the, of the site. So there you have it. I hope you found that interesting and it's given you some insight into how we carry out evaluation on standing timber in the UK. It's, uh, it's quite a, an in-depth process. It obviously takes a lot longer than this video takes, but uh, yeah, hopefully you've got a good idea of how we provide prices to landowners for much needed homegrown timber.